Morning YouTube, welcome back to the African Alu Outdoors. Hope you guys are all having an awesome week. I haven't had much time to do uh, much video footage this weekend, so I'm going to continue with the next one in the series of looking for a second-hand bow and finding it. Um, so these next few things that you'll see in this part of the video are just covering the basics, such as looking at the limbs and the cables. Hope you guys find the video interesting. Remember to please like and subscribe down below and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers. So now we're looking at faults that you need to look for on the bow. Um, if you're buying a second hand bow, one thing is, is that I would suggest that if possible and where possible, inspect the bow personally. There's a couple of small things to look at. Um, normal wear and tear on a bow um, on the hard parts is pretty normal. Um, my bow is a 2013 model and you'll see that uh, there's a lot of wear and stuff already on the camo pattern. This is what is referred to as the riser, which is the main sort of body component of a bow. You have your sight, your rest and uh, your stabilizer. Those are the major, major components. Then of course you have your cams, your string, your string stopper and your cable guides. So when you are buying a second hand bow, one of the things that you want to try and look at is you want to have a look at the limbs. And it's very important that you inspect the limbs. And the way you do that basically is just to run your finger over all the edges. And you, you need to feel for um, splinters of carbon. If you've got splinters of carbon, I'd be very seriously concerned, especially on the edges. These bows do wear, you will see on mine over here, this is from hanging it up, but there are no splinters there, it's absolutely smooth. The other thing that you wanna look for is you wanna look for um, delamination. So delamination is discoloration through the camo pattern. And I'm gonna put in a picture now of my previous limbs, which are over here. Um, I, these were replaced by the factory under warranty. So I was very grateful for that. And uh, the next thing you want to do when you're looking at a bow is you want to inspect your cams. Your cams want to be smooth, so you might need to pull the bow. Please remember if you pull the bow, you put an arrow in it and you don't dry fire it. You want to see if the cams are nice and round, you know, that they, they've got smooth edges and that they're not buckled or bent in any way. You also want to check the strings. And when I say you check the strings, you want to check the serving on the strings as well as the string themselves. The serving is just basically Dacron that's wrapped around the string to protect it where it has contact. So such as over the cams here, the, the string is very, um, gets a lot of wear and gets a lot of use. I had this one, I think, replaced in the middle of last year. Um, they normally last me two to three years and um, it's starting to show a little bit of signs of wear on the bottom here but i'm not too worried about it just remember that when you are working with bows that you want to maintain your strings as soon as they start showing a little bit of fluff you want to get some string wax put the string wax on and then create friction that the string can actually withdraw the oils or the wax inside there so those are the key things that are when looking at a bow obviously the draw cycle needs to be smooth your strings need to be attached also just uh i would suggest that you look at your d loop on a regular basis and you make sure that is healthy i've i had one break on me last year at full draw and um yeah let's just say that the arrow had also unlocked itself so i had complete failure of the string um, so this is a new string as of November of last year. Then things that you want to start looking at is uh, rests. Now there are a number of rests. I prefer, personally prefer the long drop away rests. This one is a rip cord. Um, so you can put it, you can knock an arrow and when you pull the string, it will, it will pull itself up and release when you release the string. Or you can knock an arrow you can pull this up and it's locked in place. This does also have what they call a cage. So there is a, an arm that comes over the top here 
I'm not a fan of the cage, so I kind of just tend to leave it off. But uh, you can use the rests that are permanently fixed in the upright position. I don't like them. I like the drop away, so I think uh, they allow your arrow to fly a lot more true. Um, but if you're starting out, what I would suggest is um, that what I would suggest is maybe that you consider looking at a whisker biscuit. Now a whisker biscuit is basically just a bunch of hair. I don't know if you can see that. And you slip your arrow in there. And these are great. These are bulletproof. What I don't like about them is they do slow down your arrow flight. Um, they don't like heavy arrows and with time the bristles become worn out. So it is a nice thing to, to start off with. Sights, you need to decide what sights you've got. This is a three pin sight. The, uh, the one that I use on my other bow is a five pin sight. Um, I like a sight personally that is a lot further away from the riser. Some people like them up close. Um, but it's all just personal preferences really. And then, you know, a stabilizer. So this bow is also in good condition. If you were to go through the limbs and you were to check this bow, you would see that there is actually this this most this bow is actually even better than my my own personal hunting bow this is just a kiddies bow so it's uh, quite nice and flexible soft 